morning. My name is Ginger. If you are asked the question, what do you learn in a one Buddhist temple? How would you respond? Probably your answer will reflect what you value the most in your spiritual life. I might suggest your answer could be, I learn about the threefold practice. If you wanted to be even more specific, you could say, I learned how to make mindful choice in action. And in fact, this is going to be the topic of my talk this morning. Mindful choice in action is one of the threefold practices in one Buddhism, along with cultivation of the spirit and inquiry into facts and principles. The Korean word for mindful choice in action is 작업 취사. 작업 means to create karma. 취사 means to make a choice. Together, this practice subject is about how we can create karma through our choices. Life is about making choices. In every choice we make, there comes a corresponding result, in other words, karma. So life is all about creating karma through the choices we make. The section about mindful choice in action in the One Buddhist Dharma book provides the definition of this practice, its purpose, and the consequences of it. We practice to promote creating positive karma in our day-to-day -day life. Karma is what is made through our body and mind. Karma is a neutral word. It does not entail anything bad as you might have assumed. This is because making karma, either good or bad, solely depends on how we come up with the action we choose. The choices we make moment by moment are not predestined. Rather, we constructively engage in the making of our own karma. We choose the way we wish it to be. Therefore, karma is not something determined by an external force. It is something that we create by ourselves. Mindful choice in action is a practical method, and so it is a motivating force for bringing about positive changes in our life. Each time we make a choice, we become a creator of our own life. In our Dharma book, the section about mindful choice in action is like an instruction manual. And when you read it, there is one important word you can find if you read between the lines. That word is no. Many times, creating wholesome karma involves saying no to unwholesome habitual energy and the rambunctious human desires for food, sex, sleep, wealth, and reputation. Let's take a look at how this practice of saying no can benefit us and help us to make good choices. Saying no can reflect our true self. This is certainly what I learned when I walked the Camino pilgrimage in Spain last year. I walked for 35 days. The pilgrimage began in a small town in France, went across the Pyrenees Mountains, and ended in Santiago de Compostela in Spain. During my pilgrimage, I needed to make decisions all the time, big and small. Some of my decisions were good, some were poor. Luckily, I completed my pilgrimage and made it to the very end. I can tell you, it was a real tough journey. And yet, enlightenment did not come to me as I had initially anticipated. While walking, I kept thinking of what I was doing there 
spending so much time and money. These thoughts of regrets stayed with me until the last moment of my trip. And then a chance spiritual awakening came to me unexpectedly on my way back home. Long story short, here is what happened. My flight back home from Madrid to Paris and Paris to RDU was one long continuation of hardships. Because the schedule of my first flight was mismanaged, all the following flights got mixed up, and it took, it took two fairly miserable days for me to come home. Nonetheless, while I was undergoing a series of unlucky incidents, I crossed over the tipping point. It began with the first choice I made. Just like the character Neo in the movie Matrix, I said no to my habitual energy at the Madrid airport. It turned out that my flight from Madrid was not scheduled to leave for eight hours, and so I had a lot of time to be there. The moment I realized this, I paused for a split second, and in that split second became awakened. I could choose to do whatever I wanted for the next eight hours. I realized that pausing created a critical moment that determined whether I would just surrender to the old ego self or not. So I said no to the ego and redirected my energy. After I made the first no, I was also able to make a U-turn from all the following unlucky situations that came my way. If I had not said no to them, I would have soaked myself into a feeling of restlessness for those eight hours in the airport. I would have fought with the taxi driver who ripped me off in the middle of night somewhere in France. I would have felt so miserable when I had a stomach ache during the entire flight back to RDU, and there were more I would have sort of situation. At all of these moments, I said no to the reactive mind and paused. By doing so, I took initiative over the habitual energy and redirected it to the way I wish it to be. This showed me a new perspective that included other possible choices I could make and did make. This whole process became a series of spiritual awakenings to me. I realized that what it meant to be a creator of my own life. It means I can renew my energy from habitual to wholesome. Refreshing our true self plays an important role so we can create karma in the way we design. One way to refresh it is to say no and stop. So chug up a mindful choice surely means to create karma. We all have the power to bring about a result what we want to see. This is because no matter how strenuous are the circumstances we encounter, and no matter how seemingly unlucky the incident we may have, it is indeed ourselves that decide how to respond and how we compose our lives. By the way, in order to learn to say no to your old being, you don't need a walking pilgrimage or to purposely place yourself in tough situations. You just need a bit of a brave heart and you need to keep building the muscles of your mind. Mind practice won't be able to be complete merely through one big moment of awakening. The practice of mindful choice is like a lifelong companion. It takes time for us to tame our rough mind. Think about your own habits. 
You may pick one now and reflect on how you treat it or how that habit treats you. Can you even tell who's following who? At this point, I'd like to introduce you to Master Hu Tesan's analysis on the causes that hinder us when we make choices. Those causes are ignorance, uncontrollable desires, and habits as solid as iron. These hindrances are humongous challenges to overcome. Let's talk about them. Ignorance means lack of wisdom, and it blocks us from discerning what is right from what is wrong. Many times the question of what is right and what is wrong is not a philosophical one. Rather, it involves seeing things clearly. Wisdom can help here. A wise person knows when to say yes or no. The good thing is that as we get older, we can cultivate some wisdom, a sense of discernment and clarity. The only problem is that this takes many years of living. Yet we do not want to say, I could have done better on our deathbed. How about desires? Human desires are always with us. It is only their faces that change as we go through different stages in life. When we are young, we tend to have more cravings for physical needs like sex or sleep. As we get older and obtain higher social positions, these cravings change to those for wealth and reputation. What do we do with these desires? This is a real question to ponder. Habits, in some sense, are the most difficult opponent to overcome. One reason is that habits only get harder as we grow older. I know I cannot change my parents' political viewpoint or their fixed thoughts on some social issues. Oftentimes, the more life experiences we have, the more fixated our ego or our habits can become. Nonetheless, the practice of mindful choice and action is about loosening our habits, redirecting our craving minds, and cultivating wisdom. If our ego has not served us well so far, why do we keep holding on to it? We've got to do something, right? So let's talk about and think about a proper tool to use. Here's my idea. Say no to your ego. Saying no can prepare us to use the tool of our mind. Saying no is not a trick or magic at all. It merely takes us to the very ordinary process of taming our mind. And this process is done through time, effort, and a sincere, unremitting state of mind. The tool of saying no has a name. It is called 금강이도. You can think of 금강이도 as a knife that is as strong as diamond and so sharp that it cuts paper just by being placed on top of it. We want to deal with the root causes of our habits and craving minds. And to do so, we use the knife of 금강이도. We use it to say no, or we say no to use it. And when we do, we are forced to pause for a moment. And in that moment, we can refresh our true self instead of being dragged around by reactive mind. In the book, Thunder's Silence, it says, when a stone hits a dog, the dog chases after the stone when a stone hits a lion, the lion chases after the person who threw the stone. 
When our habits are dragging us here and there, what do we need to attend to? We do not want to solely chase the stone of our habits and blame ourselves for what we've done again. When we want to stop what is wrong, it is preferable to stop the mind first. 금강이도 is the tool for severing that mind. But an uncomfortable truth is that this tool is only made by putting in a lot of effort over time with a great deal of sincerity. Life is tough. Therefore, our mind practice needs to be tougher. These days, I am working on my guitar so I can play some K-pop songs, not BTS though. The songs I've chosen are slow and jazzy, and they have introduced me to several new guitar chords like B minor 7, B flat, G minor, E minor 7 sharp, and so on. Do you know what this means? It means, for example, to make a B flat, I need to make a bar with one finger, index finger, and place the other three fingers on the three different strings within um, fret three. This, this guitar chord pushes me to tame my fingers to go against their usual comfortable positions. Even so, do I want to play the songs I like? Yes, I do. So I'm, I am enduring the process. Do you want to cut our mind of wrongdoing with just one touch? If so, we need to get out 금강 이도, the special knife. In other words, the resolute mind. We need to go through an uncomfortable, uneasy process of watching our mind and saying no to its habitual energy over and over. This is the method most assured to reduce the gap between what we know and what we actually do. Spiritual practice is your journey from knowledge to action. When it comes to our everyday life, mindful choice and action helps us create positive changes. Obtaining the power of choice will help us come one step closer to becoming a living Buddha.